So what's up guys with Ben Abarim and it's singing into the Ben Abarim podcast Talk about real life stories from real people It's available on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcast And for those listeners, for those supporters who have been supporting this podcast I thank you from the bottom of my heart for you have been so gracious and so supportive of this podcast Continue doing so, share it to your family, friends, loved ones And subscribe if you haven't uh, Share it, I've said shit Okay, like if you love any of my episodes and uh, today's episode is um, I have invited a fashion designer and also an entrepreneur who is very active in the fashion scene here in Kuching, Sarawak. Uh, the scene is small, I mean, from my perspective. I don't know about her perspective, but we're going to talk about that more later on. So without further ado, Nenko Razali, welcome to the Berna Barim Podcast. Thank Hi. you so much for Thank being here. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so Friday night, what is it? How is it like for Neng? Uh, usually, it will be uh, my time to watch my K drama. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Any K dramas that you've been watching these days? Oh, at the moment, uh, I just finished actually. I marry my husband. Okay, and I don't know that. <laughs> I never watch K dramas. I really watch. What is it about? I mean, is the title self-explanatory already? Yeah, marry it's a, my husband. It's a, like um, a revenge story. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> It's not my, uh, tip, it's not my genre, but okay. uh, my good friends uh, asked me to check it out. So I just why not, you know, try come out from my usual genre and mm. watch something different. Yeah. Dramas, okay, dramas. <laughs> okay, uh, okay. Friday nights. Do you usually eat at home or do you eat out? Uh, depending, most of depending. my friends because they work nine to five. Okay. So most of them they want to go out on Fridays. Mm. So. Um, sometimes I'll join them, mm. but uh, honestly speaking, I prefer Stay uh, home. staying in. Yeah, <laughs> staying in. Why so saving? Uh, it's my own. Uh, it's my personality. I think. I yeah, see. I see. I see. Yeah, because I went out too much when I was younger. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. That explains a lot. <laughs> You've enjoyed too much, and yeah. now I'm like, okay, I, I, I've done all that stuff. Yeah. Okay, all you kids out there, huh, I've done all that. <laughs> So yeah, now yeah. it's a bit tiring, so right. I normally get sleepy around nine. So eh. I prefer, yeah, to stay at home. Same, same, same. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> when I was in my twenties, nine is like still like early. Oh, it's very yeah. early. Very early. <laughs> nine is like, huh, where else? Where to next? Come on, let's go, man. But now I'm like, uh, I prefer stay at home. Yeah. My bed is calling me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, okay, you prefer staying in, and then on Saturdays mornings, usually mm. if it's if there's nothing today for the podcast, what do you usually do on your Saturday? Mm, morning walk, most of Ooh. the time. Yeah, yeah. I, I love uh, morning walk and night walk, but I prefer night walk actually. Mm. Um, or um, going out with my friends because some of them, they love to go camping mm. or uh, road trip. Mm. So I prefer to do those kind of things on Saturday if I'm not working. Lah. Mm. Or just stay at home no, and stay at home. continue watching K-drama. K-drama. <laughs> 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 all right, 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 right. So uh, we want to know more about you. So uh, to know more about you is to pick all these cards in front here. <laughs> okay. We have six cards here. It's called Icebreaker, where we want to know about how your dreams are, mm-hmm. how you expose, uh, what are the things that you do, and that will expose you okay. <laughs> and your set of beliefs <laughs> and your self awareness. <laughs> Courage and life lessons. Okay. So pick two out of the six cards. Okay. And yeah, Maybe we can't wait I to hear your answer. Maybe I pick um, courage and dreams. Yeah, go ahead. Pick it. Which is this two, right? Yeah. Mm. yeah. I will do this. Okay. Okay. You can start in color. Okay. Fast forward 20 years. What does life look like now mm. oh okay <laughs> yeah, yeah. that shows your age now okay <laughs> <laughs> i'm 40 this year by the way oh okay okay um, still young <laughs> <laughs> um okay before that l- okay life begins at 40 do you believe that yeah, 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 because uh it depends on which perspective but i mm. believe life begins at 40 because when you're I don't know about other people. I'm talking about myself. Yeah. Right. Uh, at the age of 40, I uh, make peace with whatever I have. Means my weaknesses, Correct. my strength, mm. uh, my past. Mm. Uh, I mean, I sometimes it's 
harder to forgive yourself than to forgive others. Yeah. But at the but this age, I realize you know like I am more accepting. Just go with the flow. Right. No more. Um, uh, you know, sometimes when we were younger, we have so many dreams. We want right. to achieve this and that. Yeah. We sacrifice our time sometimes. Not not only time. Uh, money and everything <laughs> just to achieve our dreams, right? Emotions. But uh, at, at this age, um, I am more relaxed. Uh, I don't really, you know, of course, I still put on effort on the things that I want to do in life, but I'll be more relaxed. Even sometimes, uh, you can ask him, d- during our free time, we watch uh, drama together. Oh, right, <laughs> yeah. right, 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 so right. if there's no, uh, there's nothing to be in rush mm. for, I won't rush for it. I just, you know, take my time to relax and all. Because previously, if I don't do work right, I feel anxious. Mm. Like I am, how to say, I'm not doing enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But no, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> you're being harsh on yourself back then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm. uh, yeah. And then you're being your hardest critic. Uh, you are your hardest, hardest critic. critic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but now you're like you're content with life and like yes. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Fast forward twenty years. What does life look like now? Yeah. Uh, it's more relaxed. Uh, I love myself the most mm. at this age. Mm. Um, like previously, I would blame myself for the things that I couldn't achieve right. or things that I work for don't really go uh, to you know my expectation. But nowadays, I feel oh, I love myself the most at the moment. So myself is my priority. If I don't feel easy mm-hmm. about it, so I won't do it. Right. Uh, and uh, I am more selective now in terms of time spending, money spending, and whoever I want to spend my time with. Yeah, very selective. <laughs> mm. Because, um, yeah, uh, because, because of the past experiences, uh, I think this is the best um, solution. Mm. I'm drawn to money, money, save, uh, money spending. Uh-huh. <laughs> How much have you spent? <laughs> in my 20 years, I didn't spend, uh, I didn't save uh, anything honestly okay. yeah because when I had my nine to five jobs I also work uh, after I have my side jobs uh, after uh, working hours yeah. because to cope up with my lifestyle right. uh, when I was younger because I was living in uh, KL Ooh. I have hobbies I have things I want to do yeah. I have places I want to be yeah. so I I work hard for it you know because I I want to achieve those you know mm. I want to go there I want to meet these people, yeah, I want to yeah, do yeah. this. Yeah. And then, uh, how to say, and I, I live a certain lifestyle because I, I'm happy with that kind of lifestyle at yeah. that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, if you ask me if I save any during my younger years, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That explains it. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. You can move on to the okay. next question. Yeah. Next question. <coughs> what conversation do you need to have to set yourself free? Hmm. Hard to hard talk. Yeah. yeah. To set myself free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What conversation do you need to have to set yourself free? Um, I, I don't think I can find a, how to say, the specific answer for okay, this yeah. because uh, it depends on the it has to be the right time the right moment with the right person yeah 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 and you should know <laughs> the person well you should uh you should place an accountability on that person uh, yeah if yeah. you see that person is accountable that's when you feel comfortable the person yes and yeah. then um because i'm a person who is uh, very selective with my uh, inner circle right so people will hear different sides of me. Mm. So what people talk about, like uh, the, their, pers- their spec- perspective defines who they are, uh, the radius <laughs> between yeah, 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 me yeah. and them. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Going back to, uh, I want to rewind a bit to the things that you say just now, mm-hmm. uh, your expectations. When you don't hit certain expectations, mm-hmm. that is when you feel at your lowest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I... I um, because I've read this before, like a few weeks ago, a few mm-hmm. days ago, we always hear comparison is the thief of joy, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So this thing that I've read, it's it says about expectation is also 
perspective of joy. Yeah. When you expect too much on the things that you do. For example, mm-hmm. you're working out on project A. Mm. You expect project A to be the best project ever. Mm-hmm. It, it, it executes well and then the turn of events it turn as well. But unfortunately, project A didn't happen to be as what you have expected. And when it doesn't go as planned, that's when you... It's when you go, I mean, you go upset about it. Mm-hmm. That's when your emotions just turn negative. Yeah. And that's when you, you just, your, your, your thinking process, it just goes haywire. And that's mm-hmm. when you're so angry about yourself, thinking about why, why it didn't work out, what happened, yada, 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 yeah. you know. So that's what I've read. Um, expectation and also comparisons. These two are the thieves of joy. So be careful in choosing which to choose. Mm-hmm. Don't let those to steal your joy. True. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, we have known a few things about Neng. Uh, yeah, I can call you Neng, kan? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. All right. <laughs> so let's go to um, the story of you as a fashion designer. Mm-hmm. Uh, how did it all begin? Uh? When, did you, when did you start and how was the story like? Okay, uh, when I came back to Kuching in 2013, uh, mm. of course, I, not to say lost connection with my hometown, but because I was away, so I didn't really, you know, I did not, I don't have a circle of friends, certain network to to live here in Kuching. Right. Mm. So I took my time to, you know, reconnect with my uh, hometown friends, mm. getting to know new people, and then I did uh, search for you know job in companies, mm. uh, government sectors, mm. but you know it's not happening. Mm. So that was when my two good friends they said, "Hey, why not we start you know um, a simple business like um, selling beauty products and fashion and all?" So we thought of doing it as a how to say, just to try, you know, because that time I was still teaching in a dance academy. I was Ooh. teaching uh, Sarawak traditional dance. Ooh. So most of the time I'll be free on Saturday, Sunday. So <coughs> we started selling beauty products on uh, Saturday, Sunday. Mm. In It can be flea market, uh, mall. So pop-up market. Yeah, pop-up market. So we just rent a booth and sell those things. Lah. So... Let me guess, Green High Mall. Mm, it was at Plaza Merdeka. That was our first. Oh, yeah, okay, and then okay, we okay. we moved around lah. Okay, uh, okay, okay. We even went to what do we call that? Regatta, Sarawak Regatta. We joined Ooh, all those kind of booths. Okay. Any events in Kuching, we just joined lah. Yeah, yeah. So that's when I, um, when we were selling our makeup lah. Uh, perfume, what else would we sell? Huh? Uh, beauty supplements, right. fashion. So people keep on asking me, hey, where do you buy your turban? Because that time, I, most of the time, it was outdoor. So I don't really wear a proper hijab. So I just uh, wear turban. Right. Yeah, because previously, I was also a non-hijabi. So I don't wear uh, tudong before. Right, right. So that time, I was still <laughs> learning how to wear you know, the scarf. Yeah. So I told them, no, lah, I made this myself. It's just for myself. Something like this right. or a turban that I tie on. Right. So I told them, you can do it yourself also. Bah. But then I realized, not everybody can do it. Yeah. So um, people keep on asking, please lah, t- uh, do some for us and sell it. But I don't take it seriously. Lah, yeah. Because my intention was to sell our the makeup and all that, right? right? So until this one point when uh, there was a cancer patient, mm. uh, he, she was going for a treatment. So she met me at Plaza Merdeka, if I'm not mistaken. Oh. So that's when the first time she approached, la, she was wearing like a snow cap kind of a bini. Ka, I, I don't know how to say that. Yeah. But it's like a snow cap kind of material. La. Mm. So she told me that... Um, uh, she had to attend events like dinner, gatherings. I think she's kind of person yang memang involved in banyak events lah. Maybe memang her, how to say, not to say career, but that's her social life yeah, lah, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So she told me she don't have something yang proper to match her daily feed. Right. And then when she go for dinner, of course, when she wear bling bling, not suitable with the snow cap and yeah. all that. And she's a non-Muslim, mm. so she's not aware of styling hijab. So because I told her, oh, you can just buy shawl and you can wrap around. Yeah, so, but 
that's when I noticed, yeah, not everybody know how to wear that. But still, I didn't do anything. Lah. I, told right. her, uh, I told her, you can try to... I even searched for shops for her so that she can buy from there. Yeah. But still, she... <laughs> I think twice, the second time she came to me, then I think, okay, lah, I, I do it for you. Lah. Just, just for the sake of... Uh, to help her to attend the dinner. Uh, so... Oh, yeah. She approached you twice. Yeah, oh, that's wow. when I decided. Yeah. Okay. It's not the first time. When when she oh. first, she even emailed me. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. To that extent. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So she emailed me, right. and then the second time she also still go to the booth and ask for the turban. So that's when I decided to do, if I'm not mistaken, three three pieces for her. Then after that, she brought more friends. Oh. <laughs> so uh, when when she brought more friends, that's. When my friends told me, I think then you just, you know, start so, selling, yeah. yeah, because uh, people really, really want to have uh, that kind of instant turban. Yeah. Back then, it was just very simple. It was just hand stitch. Uh, I don't know how to use machine, ma, mm. because during my stu- student years also, kan, uh, it's not compulsory for us to jahit. We only design, oh. so we can send it to seamstress. So I don't have the yeah, machine yeah, skills. Yeah, yeah. So I just jahit tangan lah, and then wrap around and jahit tangan. Oh. But then, um, that time when my, when that happened, then my friend told me, I think you should take this seriously. Put a brand name on it. Then that's when I started lah. Yeah. No plan at all. Yeah. Uh, zero capital for that turban itself. I just use because uh, if we want to a simple turban, yeah, you just need like. Less than a meter of kain, bah. So, I see. Yeah, so I was, I used my friend's kain, yang leftover, my tailor friend's punya kain leftover. That's when I started lah. Ah, uh. I see. <laughs> All right. In retrospect, right? Mm. Um, have you ever wonder why that cancer patient approached you many, many times to do something for her? Mm. Have you ever thought of that? Yeah, because um, sometimes. Um, we, well, we were born differently. We we have a different approach in life. We yeah. have different to gun. But from my personal experience, I noticed that when things keep on popping up in my life, I think I should do something about it. Yeah. Then it will surprise me. Like yeah. I didn't know that I have that kind of potential yeah. of of doing all this. Yeah. So I don't because I'm the person who will not. I'm not really proactive. You know. Uh, honestly speaking, yeah, yeah. I only do things when people approach you, approach me, yeah. and not once. Then I, I think, oh, if if they think I can do this, maybe I, you know, maybe yeah. I can do it. Yeah, 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 <laughs> but yeah. if you ask me personally to come up with you know revolution and all that, I, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. really, right. yeah, right, right. <laughs> I'm more a relaxing person, and yeah, then yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see. right. Have you ever wonder where she now? Like, have you um, asked around? Yeah, because that was in 2016. I think that time she was already in her 70s, I think. Right. Um, I'm not sure if she's yeah. still around. And she's not local, actually. I see. Yeah. Oh, mm. you've gone work. No, yeah. Ah, I see. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to ask more about uh, this business of yours. Mm-hmm. It has been growing since 2016 mm-hmm. uh, how many years of that now 2016 now it's 2024 almost 10 years or oh, 8 years now mm. yeah how do you stay afloat throughout these 8 <laughs> years okay 2016 and then I think I COVID happened uh, before uh, COVID happened yeah. actually uh, Neng Korazali has been on idle ah. for a few years because I started something else yeah right, in right, 2018 right. or 19 mm. uh, I thought I not to say give it a break, but I, it was in idle mode because I focused on a different project for mm. two years. Mm-hmm. But then uh, it didn't have uh, not really working. Then COVID happened. Mm. Yeah. Then after COVID, uh, then I really start again. So if let's say, if we really want to count it, like when we say business, we should see the money flow, right? So if we if we, if I want to really calculate in terms of business, I think it really started off uh, after COVID. Yeah, okay. that, that's when I seriously uh, take it as a business. Right. Yeah, when right. I started right. 2016, it was just like uh, how to say, um, not to say experiment, but just for the fun of it. Yeah. See how yeah, it goes. Yeah, that's why I started 2018 with something else because I thought want to do something 
uh, bigger and serious, yeah. Mm. All right, right, right. <laughs> so, uh, this business of yours, it's called Nengko Razali, right? Yeah. How is the team like? Who, who, who do you work with? Do you mm-hmm. have anyone that works alongside you? Okay, um, Nengko Razali is a registered uh, fashion trademark. Right. Uh, most of the time, I work by myself. Mm. I design and I, uh, if like small quantity, I jahit myself. I do marketing myself, selling it myself. But for projects or events like I need people, then I get uh, friends or part-timers to help me. Lah. I uh, see. So you do things all by yourself. Most lah. of the time. Most yeah, of the time. Yeah. All right, 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 right. Mm. So for 2023, If you want to go back to the year 2023, mm-hmm. how was it like for your business side of things? 2023 is really, and uh, to me, it's really a opening a lot of doors. Mm. Uh, doors that I didn't expect to, you know, open. Like I didn't, mm. I, it surprised me a lot. Lah. Like I can do things more and bigger compared mm. to the previous years. Mm. Uh, for example, um, previously I did, of course I did fabric printing in the previous years, right. but it's for a different reason, like for clients and uh, and then mostly for clients and because I, not to say consultation, but people will approach me for like uh, uniform and then uh, branding of the uniform. Lah. Right. But then uh, last year I started like uh, printing fabric for um, souvenirs for g- corporate gifts and all. So corporate gifts is something new mm. to me, and mm. I really love to adventure more on that. I see mm. corporate gifts. Okay, now I'm intrigued to know what sort mm-hmm. of gifts that you can. Okay, normally do. corporate gift people will give like like corporate gift lah. But yeah, but yeah. for my side it will be a fashion. Perfect, yeah. Fashion corporate gift. Yeah. So like handkerchief, necktie, oh, yeah. yeah, scarf. So it's like a different thing, like compared to those. Uh, yeah. Typical ones. Yeah. yeah. Of yeah. course, the volume is not as big as the normal, uh, the the usual corporate yeah. gifts. Yeah. But this one will give you more like how to say, um, different kind of feelings. I think. Yeah. Mm. And then, uh, it's more, like for those who prefer Shrawakian or personal touch on the. Uh, gifts, yeah. Right. Then Razali have it. <laughs> I see. Okay, okay, okay. So you do turbans. Yeah, uh, turbans. Scarves. Scarf, neckties. Neckties. Uh, handkerchief. Handkerchief. Yeah. For mostly for the corporate gift lah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Face mask, the one that I gave you guys. Yeah, yeah. 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 So oh. even the bucket hats is also um Free official guys. <laughs> <laughs> official Reference. merchandise. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I see. Okay. So face masks, turbans, scarves. Uh, okay. Um, these are all for women. Mm-mm. Do you have anything for us men? <laughs> That's what Kamaro is wearing now. Oh, okay, it's a vest, <laughs> a vest lah. Yeah. Is that the vest? So yeah, this, yeah, yeah. yeah um, mm. because a lot of uh, male friends also ask me, you don't have anything for yeah. the male. We yeah, only can yeah. buy bucket hats from you. Yeah. So end of last year, I came up with this uh, very simple. Uh, vest with hoodie, mm. like for the men lah. Wow. So yeah, with hoodie. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Right. 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 Cool. 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 At least there's something for us men to wear from your <laughs> brand. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Um, we've been in the business for almost eight years, uh, and lately for the past years. Economic wise, it's just bad. Mm-hmm. Things are getting expen- yeah. expensive. Mm-hmm. Inflation here and there. So I'd like to know from your perspective as an entrepreneur mm-hmm. also, uh, besides being a fashion designer, how do you keep yourself afloat with all these things getting expensive and how do you yeah, manage it? Um, I don't come from a family who has uh, businesses right. so i don't have that experience from my you know there's no one who will teach me no guide, guide me yeah. yeah so most of the time i just do trial and error mm. so when like you said when the materials are getting expensive mm. well uh, to me it's the uh, communication is very important oh. so because uh, some of my things are uh, is available now at um, borneo cultures museum oh. juma ani pavilion and soon at the airport 
So when we have different kind of uh, places that we put our products okay. on, right? Uh, it is very important for us to communicate with that locations too. Like uh, that's what happened last year, end of last year, lah, when mm. they raised the 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 price, right? Mm. So I told them I I need to change my my product prices prices. So of course they will ask because there will be margin lah for, yeah. for for them and yep. and for us. Yep. So I told them that the margin will stay the same, but. I need to increase the, the the price because of those kind of things, lah. Yeah. So I think communication is uh, very important. Mm. So if you just for the sake of having your products on a certain places, but you can't really, you know, it make you suffer. I yeah. think yeah, we should evaluate more on that. Yeah. But uh, like I said, trial and error, and then be more uh, flexible in accepting uh, feedbacks from mm. clients because now. Um, I realized not only time are running fast, but trend also in and out quite fast. Yeah, yeah. It was just like six months ago; it was in trend, but nowadays they don't. They are no longer in trend, mm. so we have to keep up on that, and then um, stay true to your value. Mm. I, I I believe in that. So maybe some people will sell it much cheaper than you, but right. uh, why do you have to maintain with that price? You have to, you know, there must be a reason why. Um, Value lah that mm. that thing uh, that has to be communicated well to mm. your audiences to your clients. Yeah. Right, right, right. Mm. You see, communication is also important. Yeah, very Networking. important. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, as an entrepreneur and a designer, I think designer have to really um, communicate well. Uh, why is the design like that? For example, this vest. Why is it? Uh, like that, why I use mm. kain kebat and all that. Yeah, yeah, because um, kebat is one of of the um, one of the heritage from Iban uh, community mm. that people don't really know know of because people mm. only know kain puak, kain puak, mm. kain puak. Yeah, so kebat is also one of the uh, beautiful fabric. That's why I come up with this. So those kind of things. So those kind of details we have to explain to the audiences. Right. Yeah, not only just you know, uh, jahit something and mm. put it on the runway and yeah. sell without yeah. the you know uh, proper story behind it. Because I, I believe you will get to the right market if you uh, portray it well. Right. Yeah. I because I don't just you know make it available for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, we have because. Humans have choices, so mm. so do designers. So yeah. if you want to do something that is, you know, um, rich to certain people, you have to really like tell them in details, lah. Mm. Mm. Okay, you are both an entrepreneur and a fashion designer, right? How do you switch both <laughs> personalities? <laughs> yeah, uh, so hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's very hard because uh, as a designer, you need a different kind of mindset. Yes. Yeah, and then and. As an entrepreneur, uh, you need human different. skill yeah, sets. Yeah, thank you for your understanding. It's yeah. very difficult, yeah. uh, as especially when I first started because I was alone. You know, I, I I'm still you know try to cope with how to, uh, like how to behave in that certain roles. Yeah. Um, like I said, when I first started, I, I was too relaxed. I think because mm. it was just for fun, so I was still trying to figure out myself uh, how to deal with it. Because as a business person, you have to be, you have to set target. You have to have, uh, you have to deal with money. You make have to have to make sure it is cost effective. Yeah. Really, you know, give you money back. Yeah. But as a designer, you want to do something that is, yes. you know, uh, which is sometimes not cost effective and then very hard to sell. Yeah. So it takes time. Yeah. And courage to accept it that yeah. uh, th this will not work if you want to survive. And then it's easier if you are alone. But if you have uh, have yeah, have a team. You have to make sure the team also have, yeah. you know, uh, don't suffer because they are joining you. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay, out of the things that you need to manage, right? As yeah. an entrepreneur, you have to manage the um, the ins and outs, the the product that you're using, the materials that you mm -hmm, use, mm -hmm. all this non-humane thing. That's mm -mm. easy. Yeah. Mm -mm. Because they don't talk back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when it comes <laughs> yeah. to human beings, yeah. you need to manage these people. You need to keep up with their 
all sorts of behaviors, mm-hmm. all sorts of thinkings. Yeah. How do you manage that? Uh, I your subordinates. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm very thankful that um, I, I how to say um, in this life I always met um, good people. Mm. So when we you know do networking, when we make friends, um, I when I have like project going on right. I will always refer back to those that I remember. For right. example, uh, Kamarul, this is his strength. So I will put him in that position. I will not change. Uh, That's his forte. Yeah, his yeah, yeah. But the challenges also, sometimes that person, he don't recognize his own forte, you know, but he want to do something else. Mm. I faced this before when mm. I was uh, having a joint venture. So I, I know what you're saying. It is difficult, yeah. you know, because of course, Uh, he has a dream. Mm. Everybody has a dream. Yeah. But as a leader, we can see what is his potential. Mm. And it's not that we are belittling that person or what. Yeah. But for the time being, yeah. this is the best for you to, you know, you can outshine if you do this. But certain mm. people didn't understand. So yeah. in this kind of uh, situation, I believe we have to be diplomatic. Mm. But it still goes to the person himself. If they don't want to be in, in that role, As a good leader, what we should do, I think we should replace it with somebody else. Yeah. Yeah, but but if we want to, you know, there are many options. Uh, some, sometimes we will be very kind, like giving them the how to say, um, the opportunity to do it first, like uh, to join the team and all that. But yeah, it depends on how high the risk you want to accept. Yeah. Yeah, to have. Uh, Uh, to have a team that is, uh, how to say, not really working well. But honestly speaking, I prefer to get the teammates have to be someone with their own strength. Don't let them do other things that is not their strength. Right, yeah, right, If their right. strength is on production, put them in production. If right. their strength is on talking, put them outside. Yeah. Yeah, put them in front. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, placing... Soldiers at the yeah, 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 right yeah. Uh, places, right places yeah. yeah, right department, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, Neng. Um, putting your passion as a full time career, I've heard many stories that people get burnouts yeah. because they put it was it was it was once a passion project. It's just for the fun of it. <laughs> I do this on weekends. No one can stop me from being as creative as I can because mm-hmm. I don't have a boss. I am my own boss. I can mm-hmm. do whatever designs I want. <laughs> But now, you are an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. You have to set that aside. Yeah. You can't be just, oh, I want to do this because it looks good. No. <laughs> yeah, you have to, you have to uh, take into account those people who are your future customers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, You can't put your, what you think is best, yeah. 100% on the table. Yes. You have to mm-hmm. think of those Uh, external factors also out there. Mm. So the question here is that, um, don't you feel burnouts um, that is once um, a passion project turned into a career? Because I've heard a lot of stories, people <laughs> get burnouts and they they feel like it's now a burden rather than something that they used to enjoy mm. for, the, for, the, for their leisure time. Yeah. yeah. A few times that happened to me, uh, that, that's where I... Mm, you know, like think back whether I'm doing the right thing. Right. Should I go back to KL and work mm. instead of you know doing this? Because when we work, we have a stable income every month, yes. and we work in a team like a bigger company. We have a bigger team. Nine so to five. Yeah, mm. and then my role is like uh, how to say I just work nine to five, and then my role is only that part so I don't yeah. have to worry about the things yes. because I have my colleagues to yeah. do their part yeah. but when I do this all uh, full time like I work like 24 hours yeah. because when you wake up like you have to what do I do today how do I make yeah. uh, this happen yeah. and all that yeah. um, I did question myself a few times yeah maybe I should stop this and go back so, but honestly every time I want to step back and go back to my 9 to 5 job right yeah. Something will happen. Uh, something will approach me right. that keep me stay in this path. Uh. I see. So you do contemplate it at times. Like. Of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you don't regret the decision you're making now. Um, 
Yeah, because it depends on people's perspective in life, I think. But my priority in life now is I want to be near to my family. Mm. Uh, and then uh, my friends here. And to have that... Um, the privilege of my own time. Yeah, because if, let's say, I slack, it's my responsibility. Mm. I... I don't impact it on others. It's my own business and yeah, all that. Yeah, 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 but yeah. if I work in a team, in a company, if I do, you know, if I don't come up to a certain... KPI, uh, yeah, yeah, so it's my fault and because of my fault and the team has yeah, to, yeah. yeah. So when it's when it's uh, come to my own business, uh, I know it's my own... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, apa? Your own yeah. I don't, you. I don't blame anyone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the beauty of doing things on your own, you know, because mm. uh, you take credit when good things happen, but when bad things happen, you're like, also okay. you take credit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you take credit, but at the same time, you learn from it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you learn from the errors. Like, okay, it's I, my fault. Yeah. yeah, it's my fault. I'll take it. I am accountable for it. It's my fault. Yeah, my name. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Let's go back to this story. Um, the grab food bag. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It happened in 2020, right? Yeah. In hindsight, um, especially what when it happened, mm-hmm. when you upcycle all those bags, right? How would you reflect the whole experience? Like, how how is it like when you... Um, clean up the bags, <laughs> you know, sanitize it, and then you stitch it up to a perfectly. Um, it looks new to me. Uh, mm-hmm. All those bags and uh, pencil cases. Yeah, how was the experience like? Was it humbling to you? Was it like very reflecting on okay, <laughs> all these bags, I I I I I gave new life to them. You know, yeah. Okay. Uh, when I did that. Those hundreds of bags actually was done by only two people. Damn. Yeah, only me and my seamstress. Uh, because that time, it was still COVID, right? Yeah, and yeah, we yeah. were not supposed to go to work and all that. Distancing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I did that at my house, at the car porch. So, <laughs> so uh, it was therapeutic, honestly speaking, cleaning all those. Because during that time, you can't do anything. But you can yeah, go out, you yeah, cannot do yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when, when Grab sent it over by lorry pun, I don't really, you know, they just send it over. I lock the gate. So like there's, there's no, it's not normal like now, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So to have t- to do something on those hard period is very therapeutic for me. But of course, I got sunburn lah that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Panas bah. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. a few weeks, I had to wash and dry the, memang I sunburn that time. But yeah. it's really a rewarding experience yeah. to me because... Um, that time I realized, you know, all my, you know, funny ideas when I was in, in uni come true. My first fashion show was actually in 2016. Okay. On my second year in University of Malaysia Sabah mm-hmm. at our, our recital hall, I made hats and handbags from newspaper. Oh. Yeah. Okay. But it was for fun, but it yeah, was yeah, just yeah, like yeah. a very, how to say, because as an art student, we have to perform or show something every week. Every right. Wednesday, we have a recital. Right. So that that time, I thought, oh, why not? I just do something uh, from my that one lah, fashion design lah. Mm. But uh, student, but you don't have money to buy kain and all that. Yeah. Yep. So I get newspapers. Newspapers. Yeah. Yeah, 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 so yeah. when I was doing the grab back, kan, then I finally realized. This is what I'm doing like right. so many years ago, like uh, upcycling all this. But this time on a real project with a real company, a real yeah. brand. So it's really... A proper material. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not just, you know, a recital and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's a really um, meaningful. It's a very meaningful and very personal for me because I'm a grab person. I grab everything. Mm. I, I travel by grab. I yeah. buy food from grab, groceries yeah. from grab, everything from grab. Yeah. So that back, uh, that delivery bag is very meaningful to me, especially on pandemic times. Mm. Uh, so, uh, to be able to wash it, you know, to rip it off, wash it, and then make it into something useful for others, 
it's uh, I I don't know how to explain it in words. Really yeah. rewarding for me. Yeah. Right, right, <laughs> right, 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 right. Sunburns and all that. <laughs> Worth it, lah. <laughs> sunburn, <laughs> sunburn. <laughs> <laughs> but it must be rewarding when you see all the children with the new bags. Uh, we didn't cases. get to uh, because it was still in pandemic, right. so we didn't get to uh, apa, uh, see. see. Yeah. So Grab took over, and then they had somebody else to deliver it to the schools. And school wasn't open oh. yet that time, yeah, uh, yeah, So yeah, yeah, yeah. if they memang like a normal time right now, of course I will join them and yeah, and, and yeah, see yeah. kan. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But. Um, Uh, we see photos from Grab Report, so it's also how to say really rewarding yeah, experience, yeah, yeah. lah. Uh, yeah. I am very, I forever thankful to Grab yeah. for uh, having the same how to say mindset. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. and then same mission. Yeah, making yeah. my uh, funny ideas during uni come true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right, 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 right. Uh, alamak, this this question, how you part now? Okay. Um, Was that the only the one and only project from Grab as of now? Yes, yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. If let's say they call you up one day and say, hey, "Can you do that again? Will you take it?" Inshallah, I will take it. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> but yeah, with yeah. a bigger team, I think. Right, 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 yeah, <laughs> I yeah, learn, yeah. Uh, I learn a lot during the the, the process. Yeah, right, right, uh, right. I need a bigger uh, space and team to to yeah. do it yeah it was a two it was just the two of you the two of us Yo, okay. <laughs> i don't know man if i were you i'll be like no we could pay malas kena cuti tu because difficult but that time we don't have uh, yeah lah we are not al- if i'm not mistaken that time uh, people have to rotate to work if i'm not mistaken mm. yeah the yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah and then yeah lah dif- difficult lah that time mm. yeah 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 <laughs> i see all right let me see huh Right. Okay. Uh, let's change the change the route a bit. Uh, I'd like to know the wisest advice that you have received so far. What is that? Actually, if I if I want to be honest, right, I I don't really listen to. Right, 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 right. <laughs> don't really listen to advice. Yeah, yeah. advice uh, because uh, maybe I haven't found the right uh, person. I, when you said advice, uh, it, uh, to me it has to be from a real person who talking to me directly. Right, 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 uh, right Not right, from right. the not from books. The, the books or okay. audio and all that. Yeah, but from uh, a person uh, in life. I think one of it is only my dad's and my uncles. You know, my dad always told me. Uh, maybe it's not related to business and all that. Right. Because uh, because previously I work with NGO and all that. My my dad always reminded me um, not to how to say keep yourself away from other people's belongings or money. Because I worked with NGO before. Yeah, so be careful when you, uh, because the NGO that I work for is helping Afghanistan in education. So right. we have funding coming in and all, right? That's the word that I, I remember until now. My dad told me, don't, you know, uh, be careful with handling uh, funding from people and you deliver it to someone really in need. When they give you that money, it's supposed to go to those kind of person. Be careful with it. Yeah. Um, To me, even though maybe it sounds very simple, but I know what he meant by that. Um, um, how to say? Uh, Temptations can just knock and say, "Hey, you need all this money, man." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, good thing that you listen to the advice. <laughs> yeah, because um, yeah, like when we were younger, in my younger years, I don't really understand my own religion. Also, actually, because. It's a learning process. Of course, we read, but the deeper, you know, the understanding we don't really yeah. want, right? So because, but because my dad, when he speak, right, he don't really like uh, refer to a verse. No, he just yeah. say it like very General. casual yeah. word, right? So yeah. I think few years after that, then I found the verses what he told me that oh, okay, now mm. I I truly uh, understand what he says, lah. Uh. Yeah, I see. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. Uh, 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 okay. I'd like to know from your point of view, the fashion scene here in Kuching. 
how do you see it as today compared to when you first started mm-hmm. yeah. uh, there's a lot of uh, new how to say new products coming out new brands coming out and then new and people are more open about it mm. so it's a very very good thing uh, people are more sporting nowadays to to attend events with costume with theme and all that so i really hope that um, our industry will have a better ecosystem right. because we don't have that yet right. in, in kuching itself what do you mean uh, like okay when we say fashion ecosystem means that we have a uh, how to say a number of buyer that will keep those oh, demand okay, okay, okay. high and Supply then we and can, demand. yeah okay, yeah okay, okay, okay. and then we have to have a, a proper ecosystem lah mm. when the demand is there we also of course need to have our resources ready for that too yeah. so we don't have that yet yeah. now what i can see now mm. yeah because now everybody is trying to push out new things new new Uh, all new fashion, yeah, yeah, new yeah. bread, and different yeah, yeah. colors, and yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah. But we don't have a a real um, buying power. Healthy, okay, yeah, okay. healthy ecosystem for that. Okay. For example, a healthy ecosystem means that we have our own fabric manufacturer. We can oh, buy within ourselves, so okay. that w- if let's say you are a fabric seller, I can buy from you. Yeah, I yeah, design yeah. it and I sell, and somebody else will send it to I don't know Korea. US or something like that. So that's when it will be become healthy and all the graduates right. from fashion design can join the fashion industry. Right. If not, those graduates will end up doing something else because we don't have a um, healthy ecosystem here. If everybody want to start tailoring at home, mm-hmm. then, you know, like, uh, it's still the same thing like so many years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I really hope the ecosystem will be stronger so that everybody can function very well because in this fashion industry there are a lot of um, profession when people say fashion design people only thought of fashion designer yeah, but actually correct. you can be a fabric designer you can be a seamstress you can be a pattern maker you can be a fashion photographer fashion journalist what else um, stylist and then uh, stylist can work in TV production for um, you know styling the yeah, talents yeah. and all yeah. and using TV production we can promote our fashion to, to the world the yeah. yeah so that that what I mean by uh, ecosystem. ecosystem yeah oh. so these all these sectors have to work together in order to have a healthy ecosystem so right. that all those fashion enthusiasts can flourish in right. this uh, industry right know. right right so where do you usually get your fabrics? Uh, I here. try my best to get it from uh, our local uh, fabric seller like oh, Satek, Afa, Nazimuddin. Where else? Oh, Kamda, Sinegi. <laughs> oh, okay, 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 yeah. okay, okay. I try Those my best to do brands. that. Yeah, okay, because okay. Of, t- of course, uh, as a designer, because we are tempted to buy things from uh, China. Vietnam, China, yeah. Indonesia. Cheaper. Yeah, cheaper. Yeah. Uh, but um, material-wise. Yeah, no, I memang I source locally. Yeah, I mean yeah. the quality wise, sorry. Quality wise. When compare China to locals, yeah. Are um, they the same? Um, I think so. It's yeah. just that the the variation of the prints. Oh. Yeah. Mm, okay, 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 okay. Like a uh, variation of prints and different kind of material like we have cotton, lycra, satin right, right, right. Uh, and all that. But What we have here is catered for market, <coughs> like uh, it's not for businesses. What we have here catered for individuals. People mm. go to Satek Fah and all that are individuals, like our moms, our aunties, mm. they want to buy baju raya and all that. Mm. So we are not familiar. That's, that's why I said by saying ecosystem. ecosystem. So if uh, businesses like us, of course, we need to buy from supplier right. who's who sell v- variations of fabrics and sell at a lower price but how can they sell lower price to us if we only buy like one kayu correct. like that yeah correct correct because correct. to me my experience the most for one project i can buy maybe one or two kayu but if let's say businesses in KL for example yeah. they might buy like 20 yeah. uh, 30 40 yeah. even hundreds yeah. Yeah. big numbers mm. yeah mm. so if you want to say fashion industry in Kuching or Sarawak it's still uh, slow 
the 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 ecosystem is not healthy yet. Right. Yeah. Mm. I get you. I get you. What you mean? Mm-hmm. Because you have all these big brands coming. You know. Mm-mm. You have all these names such as you know, brand A, brand B, brand brand C. Yeah. But the core of the brand is the fabric. You know. Yes. And then the buying the style, power. The, yeah, yeah, the style. Yeah. Identity of the brand. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh. Okay. Let's go there then. <laughs> the identity of your brand. <laughs> How do you identify Nengko Razali? Uh, I try my best to use our local motif. Uh, most of them are Iban and uh, Orang Ulu motif. Um, because I used to be a performer. I done. I, I started dancing since the age of nine. Oh. So I am very familiar with Sarawak uh, traditional costume. Mm. So I try to make, to incorporate that in my design. Even though sometimes I do, you know, modern fabric and right. all, but uh, whenever there's a big projects, I will still stick to our um, original design. Right. I mean, by doing original means that I try my best to source for fabric that have a original motive, not the ones that you know, like freehand people just draw without mm. meaning on it. But nowadays in the fabric shop, we can just see almost similar, but it's not the same. So I'll try my best to have uh, Nenko Razi to have the, the original ones, mm. even though it's printed, but the original curves and all. Yeah, mm. because um, there are some people will, you know, have the responsibility to, to take care of that. It's not my responsibility actually, but uh, as a dancer, I it's really meaningful to me because I can differentiate with which one is original, which one come from the original. In a how do we call that? Patterns. Huh? Patterns. Yeah, original patterns and what are the ones that you know, like sometimes when, for example, when people do hand free drawing or right. tattoo and all that, right. they just you know go with the flow because they put their own essence in it. Mm. So we try. Uh, for Rinko Razali, I prefer to get the, uh, how to say, if we can find the original one. Mm. So that's when, that's all, that will also be a challenge for us, you know, because the ones that we have in, in the fabric store nowadays are just um, like some graphic designer tweaks it here and there because right. they don't know how to read it, you know. Yeah. So they thought they are all the same, so right. they just copy and paste, twist it, turn it yeah. to 90 degrees and all that. Yeah. So when it's difficult like that, I have to come up to a new solution, like printing my own fabric, which is more expensive. Mm. So if I sell it more expensive, so I don't have the buyer here yeah. locally. So yeah. that, that's when I said, that's why we need the healthy ecosystem. Hopefully we have outsider who, uh, how to say, who have the capacity to, to buy it at that price. Yeah. Then it's worth it. Yeah. If not, we have to, you know, repeat on the same thing. We just buy whatever we have in store and, you know, yeah. So if you say, uh, what is the identity of Nankora Zali? It's actually incorporating the original motif into our uh, recent uh, fashion. Right, For example, right, right. that's why I put it in this kind of uh, vest hoodie because this kind of trending at the moment yeah. with this kind of fabric. So I put our right. kebat on it so right. that they will have to wear it, mm. you know. Uh. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, this question pops in my head. Um, okay, you. Um, how do you, how do you decide on the trend of the patterns? Like, okay, this pattern is trending today, mm-hmm. so let's do this sort of pattern. Like, do you actually see other brands or other? Um, other designers who do the same thing as yours and you're like okay I'm gonna follow these guys because these guys are doing pattern A at the moment so let's do our own pattern A or how do you do you have a team decide okay normally um, because like I said I love to watch K-drama and all Mm. that so Mm. I the reason why is because I really admire them in placing their product in their drama it's just like a subtle marketing for them. They don't have to tell, I'm selling you this budget. Yeah. No, they don't have yeah, to say. Yeah, they yeah. just wear it and yeah. put it in drama. They say, where do I buy that? So uh, when I notice certain pat- certain um, styling in, in drama, that's when I notice, okay, maybe I should start, for example, the bucket hats last time. Maybe I should start selling bucket hats. 
So how do I incorporate bucket hats in our in local uh, flavor? Local uh, flavor. Yeah. So that's when I put our kain pua and ah. our, our local mo- motif on it. Um, and because it's suitable for uh, you know that time and um, that year, uh, Rainforest World Music Festival approached me if I want to be their merchandiser. So that's when I decided I should do this. Right. Um, right away mm. and then i am very thankful rwmf is a very good platform for that bucket hats because we have people from around the world mm. coming for the festival mm. and they really love it mm. yeah. oh okay so okay. most of the trends most of the items that i choose to decide to produce is i have to go through that kind of uh, how to say uh, style uh, because uh, there's no for me there's no formula no procedure on deciding on which pattern or what it's just uh, based on my instinct so when I see like for example uh, this kind of trending here it might come to Malaysia soon so I should come up with this something like that yeah yeah but th- of course there are failure too for mm. example I did uh, risk back for R- RWMF Wrist bag was very wrist bag? yeah. Oh, it's like a little bag you put on your wrist. Hmm. Oh, okay, for ham. Yeah, okay, 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 it's okay. a wrist bag. Yeah, but wrist bag. Uh, okay, uh, other places it's trending. You know, people love it. People, people buy, buy it, even it. though it's expensive, yeah. like three hundreds for a wrist bag. Who want to buy that? Yeah. But uh, elsewhere, it is very famous. People go for it so i try to make that for rwmf it didn't work oh. so means that our local uh how to say um perspective yeah they, yeah. Do, they don't really they don't really want to buy it yeah they don't it's, see it yeah yeah it's, worth it's it. not yeah. Yeah, yeah so like i said like there's uh, to me there's no really a formula it's like a trial and error yeah, yeah like I have to make peace with myself if I let's say I want to risk on this how much money would I invest invest yeah. if it doesn't turn out good do I still be okay with yeah, it yeah, uh, yeah, something yeah. like that yeah. I see yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay when you decide on a certain pattern to be put on a certain fabric or mm-hmm. whatever right do you okay for example you watch a K-drama okay I have an idea Boop, you get a <laughs> sketchbook and then you draw right mm. And then the next day, do you actually sit down with your team and say, okay, guys, this day I just watched this cat drama. <laughs> and this is what I, I saw. And then this is what I envision. <laughs> and this is what I think that will, that, will, uh, that, will, that will sell out in our products. <laughs> what do you guys think? Do you do, you do that or how? Um, <laughs> sometimes, yeah, but sometimes no. Because sometimes, right, people will think that uh, it's just my perspective, you know, like, what crazy idea is this? After mm. you watch good drama, you want to come up yeah, with this, yeah, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. So sometimes I keep it to myself. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay, so okay. I just, uh, for example, this baju was made like two days ago by him. He he jahit this by my, by himself nice. from zero, from scratch. Yeah, because uh, just because of that baju, because I want him to wear this baju today. So I want. Oh wow! Yeah, I want him to wear that baju. So okay. I want to do something that incorporate with his style. Nice. Yeah. So. When we were jalan-jalan at industry, I thought, mm, what should I buy? Uh, so I buy this kain. So the day after, then I decided to have this so that I can, you know, blend in with him. Yeah. I see. So there's no really specific, uh, how to say, specific formula or procedure in right. come up with things. Uh, it can be something like this. Ah. Yeah. Or sometimes I just come out of the toilet, then, okay, we should do this. Okay, <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Right, right, right. <laughs> ideas usually flow out at, on random moments, right? Yeah. yeah, and actually, uh, you have to act on it on the spot. Yeah, for how? Seriously, uh, for how? many occasion I slip on it lah. I draw and then I put somewhere mm. else lah, and then I don't forget about it. Two day. months later, somebody else come up with it already. Yeah. So you miss the opportunity. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I see. So the like the many times it happened to me lies on my sketchbook didn't go anyway right. because oh la, people are already doing this and yeah. la, or something yeah, like that. Yeah. <laughs> so young, eh? <laughs> yeah, you have to to me we have to act fast on it like yeah. especially if you have the how do you say your instinct yeah. is very it's strong. Strong. Yeah, you should yeah, do it yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you. I get that moment. Yeah. Okay. Um what would your what would your advice be for those listeners out there? I don't know, probably some new listeners 
who really want to be a fashion designer at the same time, they want to be an entrepreneur. Uh, what would your advice be for these people? Um, think for it for like hundred times yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. before designing it, yeah, yeah. before pursuing it. Maybe if you want me to be like very frank, yeah, nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Think about it uh, hundreds of times before really doing it, uh, because there are a lot of things that you need to sacrifice in order to start your own journey with your own brand, your own mm. business without any uh, background, without any, uh, how to say, guide. It's difficult, you know, right. because I've been working nine to five, having a stable job, able to do whatever I want, then starting my own business. The lifestyle is very different, like 360. Yeah. So we have, there are so many things that we have to sacrifice. Yeah. Like, like for example... Time. Yeah, time and then last time when we were like working nine to five, I was able to you know travel whenever Stable. I want. Yeah, I can go holiday. I couldn't do this. Yeah. I can have this as my hobby, not thinking about it whether I make money out of it. Mm. But when I do this full time, I have to sacrifice on that. I don't. I don't have that kind of lifestyle anymore. I have to you, have you know to cut down on your spendings. Yeah, yeah. because it the priority is the business. Yeah. Uh, the priority is to keep the business the running, yeah. not my own money, not my own income, the business. Yeah. People don't know how to separate the the personal income and the business that's dangerous. Yes, yes, yeah. Yes. So to me, uh, this is very important. The discipline is very important. That's why when I said I think it's true the 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 wisest advice was given by my father it's just a different setting come my father said don't meddle with you know if it's not your money you make sure you manage it properly so that's when it happened to the uh, to business. business also yeah i have nobody to check my business but i can do whatever i want yeah. right if i want to but if i want the business to sustain that's what you need to do even that 10 cent nobody knows but yeah, if yeah, I want, yeah, 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 yeah but i have to really uh, yeah. put it into account lah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah even yeah. though if let's say myself like my own income i don't have income this month or for six months then i don't have income for six months la. but yeah. my business has to be uh running i have to pay for this pay for that yeah. and then have to keep it yeah. rolling yeah. even though i don't have my own gaji yeah, yeah. but previously when i work nine to five i have my own gaji ba, every month uh, so it's a really huge uh sacrifice that you need to do if you're willing to do that if you're willing to uh, make peace with yourself when your friends go holiday, when your friends buying houses, when your friends having uh, new cars. You have to be, uh, how to say, uh, able to uh, be happy with what you have. Because content. Yeah, content with your, yourself because you have different things to handle. Yeah. yeah. So if you think you'll be able to do that, uh, be able to be happy with that, then you can do it. Yeah. But if you want to think much, much like me last time, I don't think too much. I just do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so it's really up to personal, how to say, uh, personal choices. Mm -hmm. I am very thankful for my family because they are very understanding. At the age of 40, um, other family members might be worried, you're not, you're not, how to say, not married yet la, and yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah. La. But, I am very thankful my family members are very understanding. They just let me do, do yeah. yeah. So I have that freedom of, of choosing this path. Right. Yeah. So I am forever thankful for that. So if let's say you can um, wing it like I do, then do it. Lah. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, but yeah. if you have like guidance, it's better. Uh, it's better to have guidance, uh, better to have a strong capital, strong background so that you don't suffer much during the process mm. um, because if if your intention is to have money every month maybe business is not for you yeah 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 yeah, yeah. maybe but working is better for you uh. yeah <laughs> it's a it's a risk taking step yeah. mm. like you have to consider whether you want to go and plunge yourself into that water of uncertainties because yeah. you never know what to expect yes because when we run our business right uh, our stuff is not our priority anymore yeah. actually yeah, yeah, yeah. if you business. have a if you have a team with you your team is your priority because you need the business to yeah stay yeah uh, to to maintain everybody have to have their 
how to say everybody have to sustain in yeah. that yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah. ourselves it has to be the second priority yeah, yeah. so yeah. if you want to put yourself as a priority maybe it's quite difficult yeah to yeah i'm not sure and this might be a good advice or not a good advice mm. and so it just depends on how you see things in life right 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 okay what do we expect from Nenko Rosali this year? Uh, this year, I haven't really uh, have anything firm yet. Uh, but I I plan to have a bigger event this year mm. to collaborate with uh, um, apa, uh, education institution. Yeah, because... Um, how to say, um, I try to collaborate with different uh, education in, uh, institution. La, right. Because um, I want them to, how to say, uh, have the opportunity to work in a project other than their schools or uni. Mm. Yeah, something that is like real. Uh, in, like I said, when I was doing my first fashion show, it was just for my uni. Yeah. yeah so I want to create something that they can uh, really showcase what they have uh, yeah. in a proper event. You can throw them and do the hands on. Yeah, 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 yeah. because I, when I think back, right, if I have that experience in my uni years, I might know how to choose, uh, I might choose a different path. Mm. Not to say better or worse, no. It's just a different path, I think. Um, I want them to feel it so that they know, help them to decide what to do next. Yeah, something like that. I see. <laughs> okay, okay. So that's your project for this year. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. Do you do you guys do raya collections? You know, the not really. Yeah, okay. Nick Razali never had a raya mm, collection. Okay. Yeah, okay. but uh, for my turban customer, of course, raya they will look for. Uh, uh, Products from me, lah. Yeah. Because when you say collection, means that a whole collection with fashion show. So, yeah. because Nengkorazali don't go for a festival, a festive season like that. I see. Yeah. So, like I said, it's a different, different kind of. Uh, if Nengkorazali is a big in a bigger company, yes, it can yeah. go to all those uh, yeah. market. But yeah. because uh, it's a small business, I. I don't want to take responsibility or take risk to, you know, to invest yeah. on that. Yeah. yeah. It's but a risky concept. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So maybe for Raya like that, just turbans and then some, uh, how to say, just a little few products for available for our lo local, uh, our loyal customers. Lah. Right. Not for new markets and all that. Mm. Yeah. Because, uh, like I said, uh, I want to focus more on uh, corporate gifts. And, yeah, uh, try to focus more on that. Because I noticed last year, the ca the healthy cash flow come from those kind of orders. Oh, uh, yeah. the souvenirs. Yeah, the so gifts. I'm still learning also, yeah. Because businesses, the beauty of having a business on your own and very small, you can... You know, how to say, yeah, yeah, or you can change direction whenever you think it's yeah. suitable. Yeah. yeah, so I noticed last year, merchandise and corporate gives, uh, give us a healthy ca cash flow. Yeah. Right, mm. I see. want to focus more on that this year. Mm, okay, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> All right, so that's the end of the podcast with Neng. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, it's, an, uh, it's an inspiring moment to hear stories from you. And uh, you have shaken, not shake lah. You have been <laughs> part of the um, part of the fashion scene here in Sarawak. Uh, you have been actively doing so. Continue doing it. Uh, carry the Sarawak patterns on your on your products, and then hopefully one day we can see you on on top of the world, probably in the <laughs> US or wherever. Yeah, and uh, continue to do so. And I support you with the things that you do. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you so much for this opportunity. Thank you for so much for uh, bringing Neng Razali in your uh, podcast. I am really thankful for this because uh, normally those interviews are very, how to say, uh, not to say formal, but in a proper setting. But this kind of podcast really uh, makes me feel more relaxed yeah. and I can share 
yeah. uh, more uh, compared to if you know if I put myself I'm working now I'm working now so it's yeah. different yeah so mm. I'm more relaxed now and I really hope what I share can you know at least touch at least one heart you know yeah, because yeah. Uh, we have different kind of audiences but I really hope uh, uh, what I say can reach to at least one person that can reconnect with me uh, that um, how to say uh, encourage them to try um, whatever they think mm. uh, knock on their door because yeah. if you don't try you may not know your real potential. Yeah. So uh, all this while, then Korazali has been winging it. There's no proper, solid, uh, how to say, uh, structure or right. solid plan. No, we right. just go with the flow. Right. If I need a team, I could recruit team. If I just do it alone, I'll just do it alone. So that's how I, I operate. So I hope, um, how to say, if you want to start something like this, if you have the courage to do this, I hope you um, start doing it now with whatever you have and I wish you all the best. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. for those aspiring uh, fashion designers out there, take it from Nenko Azali. I'm sure you have, you have learned a thing or two or probably more than one or two from this podcast. And uh, for those of you aspiring ones out there, go and do it. Uh, no one's going to stop you apart from yourself. But why stop yourself when you can move mountains? I'm sure <laughs> that you will. And uh, where can we find you? With socials, um, I have Instagram. Uh, the um, official one means for the products is meng.kho.razali. Mm -hmm. My personal ones, those are not so serious ones. Sometimes I just you know put my K drama boyfriends in it. <laughs> if you want to, <laughs> <laughs> you want to look through it. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Uh, Neng N E N G uh, dot. What is it? Oh, N K R. If I'm not mistaken, okay, uh, okay, Neng dot okay. N K R. Okay. And also YouTube. There are a few uh, fashion show videos in it. What else? Um, Shopee. Shopee, yeah. Uh, Nenko Razali. Mm. And also my non-active TikTok. I and, uh, see. Hopefully one day I have the courage to start uh, videos and all that. So, right. yeah, see you there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Shopee is available, yeah? Yes. To buy stuff, yeah. okay? Mm. So for those of you who want to support her products, go to Shopee and buy some stuff there. <laughs> And yeah, uh, I like to echo a bit the things that you say now because I mean, that's the reason why I do podcasts, you know, mm. because I know you guys have a lot of stories to tell, but <laughs> it's so restricted because it's on TV. And because we have to be careful with our words. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, you don't want to offend anyone, <laughs> whatever, yeah. and all that. There's some restrictions that you, you need to adhere. Yeah. Mm -mm. And that's the reason why I bring here because I feel like, man, she has a lot of stories to tell. I'm sure she has a lot of stories to tell. The ups and downs, <laughs> the the stormy girls, the, the, you know, the butterflies and all that. <laughs> and this is the reason why I bring you here and hearing stories from you, it's inspiring. Uh, it motivates not just me, and I'm sure all viewers out there to, to, to be better than who we were before, like how you have shared about your stories mm. since 2016 and to where you're at today. And uh, I wish your brand all the best. Thank you. Yeah. I wish you all the best too. <laughs> sama sama, I wish sama sama best. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Okay, so that's the end of the podcast and see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.